Yo, what is going on guys? Dr. Schwaz here. Welcome back to another Gear Spy video. Today I'm going to be discussing uh, tips and tricks for the demolitions class in PvE. So this is a video series I'm doing uh, where it's going to be like short videos on just tips and tricks for each class. Uh, last one I did was Blade Master and it did pretty well so I'm just going to be doing them for every class. Now that the game's been out and there's not going to be any more updates. Um, might as well pump these out so to keep some gears 5 content on the channel there will be other games uploaded as you can see uh, but we're going to still keep the gears 5 content going so let's get right into it uh the first tip is to be sure to mark as many enemies as possible prior to dropping your artillery strike ultimate so in operation five or six i forget which uh they changed the passive to, to a much better passive now um you can mark up to five enemies, and the marks last twice as long, so 10, 12 seconds. Um, yeah, so you want to make sure you mark as many enemies as possible prior to using the ultimate. Um, you can't always get five because it's difficult to mark enemies in this game, so try to get like three or four and then drop the ultimate. Um, of course, if you're running Tactician with Interrogation, um, you can mark more than that, so that helps a lot. Um, sometimes I notice switching to a pistol makes it easier to mark enemies. Um, sometimes with a boom and geo, you may not, you may mark a weapon across the map or a fortification instead of an enemy. So sometimes switching to a pistol helps, uh, to get the marks down or just ask your teammates to help, uh, mark bosses and stuff like that. Tip number two, uh, be sure to preactive your boom shot or your preactive your Lancer GL. Um, assuming you have the custom boom or custom GL cards respectively, um, especially on boss ways prior to using your ultimate so that you can maximize the damage. So the active effects from those cards transfer over to the ultimate. So make sure you pre-active prior to dropping the artillery strike uh, to maximize your DPS on the boss. Uh, tip number three on boss ways, if you're running custom boom shot, keep your boom shot out or in hand to maximize the DPS on the enemy. Same if you're running custom Lancer GL, keep that Lancer GL out while the enemy is bleeding. Uh, it seems like switching to another weapon causes the bleed to lower during the bleed duration. You'll see a clip here um, on Foundation where I'm testing it. You'll see me um, shoot this Swarmac here with an active boom and it does, it bleeds for 4504 and then when I switch weapons it drops down to 28.15, which is a difference in about 60%, which is a difference in the skill card, but that's just like a bug or something you want to keep out, uh, look out for. Just keep the boom out uh, during the bleed duration because it's custom boom. So if you keep the boom out, the damage, the bleed damage applies to the weapon. I don't know why changing weapons makes the bleed damage lower. That's just a bug. So just, if you run custom boom, keep the boom out. When you shoot a boss, if you run custom GL, keep the GL out when you shoot the boss. Not really a huge tip, but more something to look out for uh, in your games. Uh, tip four, when starting horde games, it's beneficial to drop your Lancer um, and then let a teammate have it earlier on. Um, so usually what people will do in my lobbies or um, my group, what we do is uh, we'll drop the Lancer and then have another DPS class like a pilot or a gunner or a tactician pick it up uh, so they can uh, kill a lot of these smaller enemies, the jubies, the drones, the rejects easier in the earlier ways. So you'll drop the lancer, you kill, act, act to reload the boom, kill yourself, and then just spawn in with the boom and the lancer again. Um, pretty useful to just have, even the engineer can have the lancer too. Um, it's really helpful to have, uh, you don't have to waste any ammo on like jubies or stuff, you can just change all them. Just really efficient um, in the earlier ways of horde. Tip five, uh, try to conserve boom shot ammo by using your active lancer bullets and chainsaw to eliminate enemies early on. Uh, this will reduce the need to die every wave via your own boom shot or buying incendiary grenades. So it kind of goes on to tip number four, but just use the lancer ammo, um, shoot the rejects in the legs, try to aim for the heads of the enemies, uh, try to get actives and uh, you'll be good to go for the first few ways until you get a locker. Um, tip number six, uh, bleed kills that result from the artillery strikes do not count towards the uh, kills from the confirmed kill skill card. So the skill card specifically says every kill with artillery strike 
reduces the cooldown for next use by 25 seconds. So on the on the kill feed, it needs to show that you killed them with the artillery strike for it to count as a confirmed kill cooldown. The bleeding from that, because of Razor Hail, will not add into that effect. So just make sure that, just be cautious of that. So again, bleed kills that result from artillery strikes don't count towards confirmed kills. They have to be from the strike itself, not the bleed. Um, and that's pretty much it for the demolitions, uh, tips and tricks. There's not really a lot to it. You need a weapon locker, you need boom shots and GLs, you just go to town. Well, in Horde, you want perk ultimate cooldown first. That's the most important thing. That way, that'll reduce your ult charge from 10 minutes to about 7. And uh, basically, any damage you do is enhancing your recharge back to your next ultimate. So, that's the usefulness of that. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for the Demolitions Tips and Tricks guide for PvE. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.